Hi, in this video, we're going to be looking at domain and range. Remember, domain is always what x values am I allowed to look at? And range is always which y values I'm looking at. Okay, so number one, part of a linear function is shown below. Which inequality best represents the domain of the part shown? So this one is asking me for domain, which is going to be the x values that I'm looking at. So when I'm looking at the x values, I can see that right here at negative 4, there's an open circle, which means an open circle means can't equal. Okay, if you see a closed point, then you are allowed to equal that number. Okay, so since I have a closed point, I know on my x values, I'm not allowed to equal the 4. Okay, and then if you notice, everything to the right of that has my line and an arrow indicating that it keeps going. So I have a point where x is 3, I have a point where x is, or negative 3, I have a point where x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and because it keeps going, I have values for all of these x values, which means all of these x's are part of the graph. So every x that is bigger than this 4, bigger than this negative 4. So x has to be bigger than negative 4. Okay, And in math, when we say bigger than, we think of greater than. Okay, so my greater than symbol is going to be here and here. And then we want it to be greater than negative 4, so my correct answer here is C. Okay, let's look at number 2. Number 2, which graph best represents a domain of all real numbers greater than or equal to 2? So that means I want a graph that's only going to have points on the right side of x equals 2. I can equal 2, so I should have a solid dot somewhere along this line. Somewhere along where x equals 2, I should have a solid dot. And then if I want to be greater than that 2, then that's going to be on the right hand side of it. So I'm looking for a graph that starts at 2 and goes to the right. So starts in 2 and goes to the right, that's going to be B. Starts at 2 and goes to the right. It goes negative to the right, but it's still going to the right. And all of these x values have y values that go with it. Everything before it does not have a y value. They're not part of the function here. Okay, So B is my correct answer for domain. Remember, again, domain are your x values. Okay. Number three, a function is gra a quadratic function is graphed on the grid. Which answer choice best represents the domain and range of the function? So again, domain from left to right. Now because I have this arrow, it means it's going to keep going out, which means all of these x values all the way over to negative infinity are all going to eventually have something over them, right? And then same thing here, as this keeps going out and out and out, there's going to be something above every x value going out towards infinity. So every single number between negative infinity and infinity on the x-axis will have a value that goes with it. Okay, So that's my domain, and my domain is going to be every single number from negative infinity to infinity. So it's going to be all real numbers. I can eliminate C and D. Okay, So now let's talk about range. My range are my y values. So how, how high can I go? How low can I go? Well, again, these are going to keep going up forever and ever and ever. So I can go all the way up to infinity. But the lowest point I see here is right here, a y value of negative 4. Okay, So all of my values have to be bigger than this 4. So y is going to have to be greater than, or since I didn't have an open circle there, equal to negative 4. So y has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. It's going to be right here. This one has a less than. We want the greater than. B is my correct answer. Okay? 
So domain, left to right, range, bottom to top. Okay. All right. Here's a function graphed below. Which inequality best describes the domain and range of the function? So again, my domain from left to right, the furthest I can go left is going to be this negative 4. Okay. And then I can go all the way to, if I keep going right, I see it has an arrow. So that means it's going to keep going forever and ever and ever out towards the right. So I can go all the way to infinity on the other side. So that just means that x has to be bigger than this negative 4. So x has to be bigger than negative 4. x can't be less than negative 4, so we can already eliminate this one. x has to be bigger than negative 4. There we go. And I know it couldn't have the equal bar, none of them do on the domains, but it couldn't because of that open circle. Okay. Now for my y values, the lowest point on my graph is going to be right here, these two dots right here, at 1. Okay, so that means the lowest I'm going to go for my range is 1. And then as I go up, I can see I have a point here at 2. I don't have a point here at 3, but if I look on the other side, I do still have a point for 3. And then because I have an arrow, that means we are going to keep going up all the way to the very top to infinity. So everything from 1 to infinity. So that means my y value just has to be bigger than 1. And since at 1 I have these closed circles, that means I can equal the 1. So notice I've got y is greater than or equal to the 1. That's going to be my answer. So not C, but A. All right. Let's look at number 5. An object is launched from a platform. The table represents the object's height above the ground in meters. H of x, that's the height, depends on time in seconds after the, after the launch. What is the range for this situation? Okay. So we're launched from a platform at zero, we're at 60 seconds, we're zero units high, okay? Oops, I think these are actually backwards. These should be seconds and these should be heights, sorry. Seconds and height, okay? So we have zero and, so these are at zero seconds. I'm starting, I'm launched from a platform. I can see my platform starts up at 60. And it goes up to 68.75, it goes up to 75, it goes up to 78.75, it goes up to 80, and then look what happens. It starts coming back down in an even amount, once half a second later. And then 75 matches with 75. So this is going to be a parabola shape, okay? Where at zero, I'm at 60. And then I keep going, and it two seconds, I have a height of 80, and then I start coming back down the other direction, okay? So if I'm looking for range, I know that I'm going to eventually, that object is going to hit the ground, okay? And my height is the meters above the ground, right? So eventually I'm going to hit the ground, which is going to be at zero, right? And then we're not going to go below the ground. We're going to hit the ground and that ball or object or whatever it is is going to stop. So we are going to be everything from zero up to 80. So all greater than or equal to zero, because when we hit the ground, we equal zero. And we go all the way up to 80, so less than or equal to 80. C is going to be my answer here. Okay? Let's look at number six. All right, number six, a quadratic function is graphed on the grid. Which answer choice best represents the domain and range of the function? Okay, so again, I can see I have arrows, which means it's going to keep going out. It's going to keep going out. So all my x values are going to be good, which means my answer is going to have to be C because that's the only one that has a domain of all real numbers. But let's just check that range. That range says y has to be everything less than or equal to 9. Or look at 9, and notice my graph, everything is below that number on the y-axis. So yes, c is my correct answer there. Okay? All right, in the next video, we're going to take a look at more of these type of problems, more quadratic
functions. So hopefully that helps with the domain and range. Sorry about the one typo. If you have any questions, make sure you're checking in with your teacher or your tutor. Thank you so much for watching.